With AB5 back in the news, trucking company owners and myself are actually all asking, is the owner operator business model completely dead? Now the first question might be like, what the heck is even an owner operator, right? So that is someone that operates and owns their truck and transports freight. And sometimes it's, you know, their trucks break down or something. And so then they lease a truck from another company and that's called a lease operator. And so they operate and lease their truck and transport loads. And then you're like, why do owner operators even exist, right? Can't you just go get your own company and haul your own loads? Well, there is actually a mutual benefit, right? First and foremost, the benefit for the company is, you know, I had company drivers and owner operators. And so like a benefit for me is I didn't have to go spend my money to buy a truck, to buy a trailer, to train the driver, do all these onboarding things, right? I didn't have to spend money. I could just bring on an owner operator that has a truck and trailer and is ready to work. And usually owner operators have more experience than brand new drivers. And so I, with a sign of a contract or with some paperwork, I could essentially get more capacity in a fleet or trucking companies can get more capacity into their fleet for a very, very, very low cost. And then the benefit for the owner operator or lease operator is they don't have to worry about finding or booking the loads. They don't have to worry about the billing or you know the invoicing of, of those loads. They don't have to worry about the liability or the losses that can happen when you're on the road, right? Because essentially, if I'm the company, then it's my insurance that would pay in case of an accident or something like that, not the owner operator's insurance. Yes, the owner operator is paying for that, but the liability and, and the losses always get attributed to the transport company, to the carrier company, not to the individual driver themselves or the individual owner operator themselves. Speaking of drivers, it's like owner operators can usually make more than drivers, right? So there's a lot of mutual benefits that you know companies can win from owner operators and owner operators can actually do better than drivers, but they can also don't like, they can eliminate some of the headache that it is actually running and managing your own business. Now there are some drawbacks to doing that. And sometimes what happens is the company is very, very strict. And so you can be terminated without cause because you're a contractor really quickly. Um, the other problem is owner operators, sometimes they have the incorrect equipment. And so it's not beneficial for the company. There's obviously benefits and drawbacks to both companies and owner operators. So just make, make sure both of you are doing your due diligence. And, but how does that affect AB5 or what is, you know, what, what in relation is that to AB5 is, well, essentially because they changed some of the classification uh, for employees now, that's what essentially AB5 did. It, it now makes it hard to be an owner operator or impossible to be an owner operator in the state of California. Now, a super brief history on AB5 is there was a company, Dynamex Operations. They essentially labeled in like 2004, all of their company drivers as owner operators, right? There was those company drivers labeled as owner operators. So it wasn't actually a true owner operator, but because AB5 is so simple and just ABC test, right? It basically puts everybody, even if you own your own truck and trailer, it puts you into the, the way that you are now labeled as a driver. Um, and so this is why you're seeing it more in the news. And this is why like there's protests on at the ports and whatnot, because it's so basic that there's very few exceptions for truckers when they do own their own truck and trailer. And now they will be labeled as a driver. But real quick, I wanna talk about the sponsor of this video, my own dang self. <laughs> um, so I, I know how to make websites and whatnot, so and some apps a little bit here and there. And so I try to make tools for truckers that can help them avoid some of the you know mistakes or pitfalls of trucking. And so one of the things that I build is a job board so companies can post jobs. And if maybe you're sick of your current job, you can check it out. It's hotshotdrivingjobs.com. I'll put a link in the description. And the other tool that I built is actually called Scam Freight. It's a Chrome extension where truckers can leave reviews of freight brokers. And so it's like, maybe you did business with a broker one time and you really, you know, they, it was a bad experience. Well, now you can leave them a review. So check out both of those in the description below. If you're getting into trucking and you don't want to stay a company driver your entire career, that's great. But you should make your, you know, North Star, so to speak, or you should make your long-term goal to be an owner operator, but under your own motor carrier authority. 
And the reason for that is because then you won't have issues like this AB5. And that's what's frustrating is like AB5 was signed into law in 2019 and it was going into effect January 1st, 2020. So, I mean, we're in 2022 now and it's been a solid two years that a lot of guys have known that this was passed. Like everybody in California should have started working towards getting their own motor carrier authority so that they are no longer affected by AB5. And, and really all it's doing is essentially widening the gap of like how difficult it'll be to go from company driver to a fully independent owner operator under your own motor carrier authority. Because that now that step will now require that you save up enough money for your insurance down payment, your truck down payment, reserves for fuel, like a bunch of other steps. And so basically it'll trap more people as company drivers. And I don't wanna say trap, being a company driver is beneficial, but essentially they, it'll, it'll make the gap bigger, it'll may expand the void of going from driver to independent owner operator because there won't be that middle step. There won't be, hey, I can be a driver and then I'll be an owner operator with my own truck and trailer, but I'll work under a company. And then from there, I'll get the experience and actually go out and start my own company, right? There won't be that middle step anymore. And that is just in the state of California, but like with most things, other states are now looking into that law as well. And so even though I'm not an active motor carrier right now, I mean, it is definitely some, one of those things I am looking to doing again in the future. Uh, I don't know exactly when, but we'll see. But the point remains the same that, you know, I, I will try to definitely make a business plan that will include owner operators because I'm in Texas, but the goal for me as a company owner will then be to transition to company drivers and company trucks as quickly as possible. And so that would be my recommendation to you if you're a company owner, is if you do have owner operators, really start doing your due diligence and looking into getting company trucks, getting something of your own out there instead of just being totally owner operators. Because at the end of the day, more and more states will start to pass laws like this and eventually the entire owner operator business model will be dead. And so who knows how, how soon that is, we don't know, but the point remains the same is that, you know, the dominoes have started to fall in regards to this. All right, that's gonna do it for this one. Let me know in the comments down below, what do you think? And I'll see you next time, bye.